I am CFO of The Metals Company, and we are developing the world's largest undeveloped resource of battery metals, and specifically a nickel, where Mining.com has ranked us the number one and number two largest nickel projects on the planet. It's a very different resource, though. So this is what a nodule field looks like. There are a lot of things there that you notice. It's uh, very tightly put together. It's um, a high abundance of these rocks, but importantly, the nodules sit unattached on top of the seafloor. So it's a two-dimensional resource. Uh, there are nodules that are below that, but for the most part, we're only interested in the nodules that are sitting on the surface. This is helpful because not only does it make it easier to collect them, but it also means that you don't have to you know, dig or blast or drill. And there's not a lot of uh, life down there to begin with. There's actually no flora whatsoever. It's too deep and too dark. And that means it's a limited ecosystem for the fauna as well. In fact, most of the life down there is bacterial in nature. So we have many thousands of hours of footage of this, but the takeaway is uh, when it comes to resource definition, um, this type of two-dimensional resource makes it quite easy to know where your resource is and where it isn't because we can survey it from the surface. It's very abundant. In fact, if you're measuring in terms of EV batteries, let's say an NMC811 chemistry, we have a sufficient amount of these metals to electrify 280 million EVs effectively the size of the entire U.S. vehicle fleet. It's also relatively low production cost because these are high grades. So if you roll it all into nickel equivalents, it's 3.2% nickel equivalent grade. Compare that to some of the other undeveloped nickel projects, it's an order of magnitude higher. And that means the economics are driven by the fact that we have to move a lot less material to get the same amount of metal. But it also impacts the social and environmental costs um, because, again, you're moving less material and these nodules would produce nearly zero solid waste from the flow sheet that we've developed with Canadian engineering firm Hatch. There just isn't a lot of arsenic or mercury or hexavalent chromium or a lot of the nasty elements that typically have to be held back behind a tailings dam. And we would produce zero tailings. It's also quite valuable. And in fact, AMC consultants put out a net present value for our first project uh, of roughly $7 billion NPV in 2021. Uh, if you update that for current metal prices, it would be north of $10 billion. So it's a very big asset for us to grow into for a market cap of roughly $200 million today. But we're not developing alone. We have the likes of Glencore, uh, who has an offtake for half of our nickel and copper, and they also are a small shareholder. All Seas, a Dutch offshore pipe and cable laying company. They've provided the ship to us and have invested over $130 million into TMC directly. I mentioned Hatch, and now we announced last week uh, that Bechtel has joined to help us along with some of our uh, application coordination. So I'm going to skip ahead here just in terms of the scale of this resource. Um, what we have on this page here is just noting there are a lot of other guys just in the last couple of months getting into deep sea nodule or deep sea resources. Transocean announced that they are devoting a drill ship to the Belgian contractor. Norway announced that they're going to be looking after battery metals in their exclusive economic zone. And even Japan noted that they're going to go after rare earths in 2024 in their territorial waters. And China, of course, a couple of weeks ago noted that they're going to step up investment in this space as well. And for good reason, uh, there is a lot of metal down there, but this is an area where China has yet to dominate the supply chain of metals coming from this resource, whereas they basically dominated everything within Indonesia and are funding and have offtake on most of that material. TMC could actually be the antidote for Russian and Chinese controlled supply. And again, if you stack up our first two projects together, it would be roughly the same size resource as Norilsk in Russia. So it is a very, very large, high-grade resource. And each of these little cars on the page represents 1 million EVs. You can get a sense for how many EVs could be electrified from our resource versus some of the other known uh, deposits within the United States. So I mentioned 1970s, you had a lot of other people trying to do this, but the reason it didn't happen, Lockheed, BP, Shell, Sumitomo, they were successful in collecting thousands of tons of these nodules, but there was no international agreement on who owned the oceans. So flash forward to 1982, the UN established the law of the sea, which determined boundaries for what is a state's right versus what is international waters. Then in 1994, they established the International Seabed Authority. And that's our regulator. They're the ones who have given us our exploration contracts. And they're the ones who are meant to finalize this year the final mining code to allow us to be the first company to go from exploration into exploitation. 
So again, the technology to do this has been there. We've shown that we can do it. We have the partners to do it. And now you have that last piece of the regulatory jigsaw puzzle, which is coming this year. So I'm going to hop ahead to, uh, we only have a few minutes left, but I'd like to play a quick video showing what it's like down there. And this is actually from our collector test, along with our partner Allseas in the fourth quarter of 2022. That's our collector robot on the seafloor. It drove about uh, 80 kilometers over the course of this test. And over the course of the test, we brought up 3,000 tons of these nodules. We actually collected 4,500 tons. We left some of them on the seafloor. Importantly, you see the vessel right there. That's the hidden gem. It's a Samsung 10,000 drill ship. That is not a new build. That is something that was previously devoted to the offshore oil and gas space. It was previously owned by Petrobras, and all seas bought it for less than $50 million a couple of years ago. You can take existing assets for the offshore oil and gas space and devote it to nodule collection. So that's what all seas is doing. That's what Transocean is doing. That's what a handful of other players in the offshore space have announced that they're going to do as well. So this is really a hybrid between, you know, metals and mining and offshore oil and gas in terms of the technology to collect this resource. That's the collector. Think of it as a big Roomba. Drives over the top of these nodules and sucks them up. Uh, it's a little more complicated than that. You actually shoot a hydraulic jet of water over the top of the nodules, and then as the curved collector head goes over it, it creates a lift effect. And that lift goes up into the hopper and then is driven up a 4,500 meter riser pipe to the surface on compressed air. So you have compressors on the surface of the vessel pumping air down, and that's how the nodules ride up. So this was a very important test for many reasons. It built a lot of confidence um, that we can actually do this, but it hasn't yet manifested itself in our share price. So I think one of the big opportunities here is that we are at the precipice of this new industry beginning. We have a resource that is giant in scale, the largest nickel project by far and the second largest nickel project in the world. But that extra piece of the regulatory puzzle that's falling into place this year is going to be what gives a lot of people confidence to come in and invest. So if we were at this stage of production and we were on land and we were, let's say, two years away, we would expect to be trading at maybe 20, 25 percent of NPV. And right now we're trading at 1 percent of NPV. But any, you know, anybody knows in this room, the resource wins out over time. Anything that's very high grade, relatively low cost, will tend to get built. And once we get started with this first ship, that's going to be what people see as, you know, a very investable opportunity. Another great thing is we don't have to go out and then build ships from scratch. In fact, this ship here, it's going to have some modifications made to it, but it will be our first production vessel operating within 90 days of us getting our permit. And those are the nodules on board. Those are the small little rocks that pile up there for 3,000 tons of those nodules in the hold of the vessel. And then those would be offloaded to bulk carriers while we're at sea, shipped to shore, very likely in Japan, where we have an MOU with PAMCO uh, to use tolled processing at their existing rotary kiln electric arc furnace facilities. So that's what the metal company is about. We have a lot more that we could go through here. Um, but I think maybe I would just leave you with you know, a couple of points here on um, the economics. And there's more of this, of course, in our uh, investors.metals.co webpage. But the economics of this resource are really quite staggering. And just for our first block alone, 22% of our estimated resource, we would estimate an NPV in excess of $10 billion today. So we think it's a great opportunity to get into this new space. And again, our uh, shares are traded publicly on the NASDAQ with the ticker TMC. So I think I have nine seconds left. I will stop right there. Thanks you very much and uh, looking forward to chatting after. Cheers.